All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the April 2022 virtual field trip to Froaring Meadows. My name is Michelle Brocious. I'm your Birdwalk leader this evening. I am a Western Cuyahoga Audubon board member and field trip co-coordinator. A little bit about this program, if you've never attended before. Every month, I pick a location for participants to go and visit independently of Audubon. And while at that location, participants um, see what's there, um, keep a bird list, journal about their experience, take photographs, and then submit items to me, <clears throat> excuse me, to um, then compile into this a presentation that I share on the on a call the second um, Wednesday after the field trip month. So, and this will be our last virtual field trip in the program. We started the virtual field trips um, as a response to COVID-19. We had shut down all of our activities, but still wanted to encourage people to get out there and, and see birds and enjoy wildlife and uh, ran this program for almost two years. I think it'll be 22 months now. And um, now that you know things are kind of settling back down in Northeast Ohio, our, our COVID community levels are low, um, time to just say goodbye to this program and concentrate on our in-person bird walk. So, so that's that. Thank you so much for joining me this evening. All right, a little bit about Frory Meadows. Uh, this 298 acre park features a 100 acre prairie and trails through the woodlands. Two trails total 3.5 miles. All ages can have fun playing tetherball here. And that is from the Geauga Park District's Frory Meadows page. All right, I wanted to know more and the Ohio Ornithological Studies Birding in Ohio website is a great resource for learning about birding hotspots in the state. Their website says, in 1996, Paul Froring, a pioneer in the development of nutritional and medical supplements, donated the land that surrounded his Bainbridge farmhouse to Geauga Park District. Much of the property was once farmland. Soybeans, oats, corn, and wheat were harvested here. In 1999, Geauga Park District entered into a 50-year lease with Chagrin Falls for 122 acres adjacent to the Froring property. All right, the Birding in Ohio website suggests checking out alltrails.com for more information. Alltrails.com provides a description of the Blue Stream Loop Trail, which is the longer loop trail at Froring Meadows, it says. Explore this 2.6 mile loop trail near Chagrin Falls, Ohio. Generally considered an easy route, it takes an average of 57 minutes to complete. This trail is great for birding, cross country skiing and hiking, and it's unlikely you'll encounter many other people while exploring. <clears throat> The best times to visit this trail are April through October. Dogs are welcome, but must be on a leash. So with those three paragraphs there, hopefully that gives a little bit of an overview of Furry Meadows and what to expect from the park. Um, there on the left, a beautiful landscape photo um, of Furry Meadows taken by Sean Missig. And it just, it just looks like a field, but as you will see, there's, there's so much more to this park. It really is a jewel of Geauga County. All right, so every virtual field trip, I do list two or three species of birds for people just to keep an eye open for some, something to look for that, that should be there. And the first species is killdeer. A uh, shorebird you can see without going to the beach. Killdeer are graceful plovers common to lawns, golf courses, athletic fields, and parking lots. These tawny birds run across the ground in spurts, stopping with a jolt every so often to check their progress or to see if they've startled up any insect prey. Their voice of far carrying excited killdeer is a common sound even after dark, often given in flight as the bird circles overhead on slender wings. And that description is taken from the Cornell Lab of Ornithology killdeer page. And um, here on the right is a photo I took of a killdeer at Furring Meadows. Second target species, the Wilson snipe. Um, though the long tradition of snipe hunt pranks at summer camp has convinced many people otherwise, Wilson snipes aren't made up creatures. These plump long-billed birds are among the most widespread shorebirds in North America. They can be tough to see thanks to their cryptic brown and buff coloration and secretive nature, but in summer they often stand on fence posts or take to the sky with a fast zigzagging flight 
and an unusual winnowing sound made with the tail. And that is the description uh, taken from the Cornell Lab of Ornithology, Wilson Snipe page. And um, here on the right, a, a good photo of a Wilson Snipe in Shreve, Ohio, taken in October 2015 by Tom Fishburn. Um, Sean attended um, as a participant and he got some photos, but they were in flight. So here's, here's a, a close up one. Um, that was it. We, nobody got a close-up photo of the Wilson snipe. We it was sighted and heard, but no close-up photo. So here, so you can see what it actually looks like out in the open, um, with its very a camouflage-looking plumage. And last but not least, the American woodcock, um, superbly camouflaged against the leaf litter, the brown mottled American woodcock walks slowly along the forest floor, probing the soil with its long bill in search of earthworms. Unlike its coastal relatives, this plump little shorebird lives in young forests and shrubby old fields across eastern North America. Its cryptic plumage and low profile behavior make it hard to find except in the springtime at dawn or dusk when the males show off for females by giving loud nasal prink calls and performing dazzling aerial displays. And that again is from the Cornell Lab of Ornithology. Um, and none of the virtual field trip participants cited the American woodcock during the month of April. The last recorded observation of the species at Forey Meadows was in March of this year. Um, it was probably still there, just if you didn't go at dawn or dusk, you might not have seen it. And I think that Sean and I um, went more during the daylight hours. But I did find an American woodcock recently um, at the Cleveland Lakefront Nature Preserve. So I was able to snap that photo so you can see what it looks like. Ooh. All right, so I am the, I'm the first one up here. I had 39 species and I visited the park twice. So my first visit to Forey Meadows was on April 23rd and I arrived a little after 8 a.m. My first bird at the location was one of the target species, killdeer. There were two of them scurrying around on the driveway and manicured lawn as I drove to the parking area. I wanted to stop and take a photo, but I knew that high up in the car was not the perspective I wanted for these shots and I was nervous about a vehicle pulling in behind me. Better to just continue to the parking lot. However, I did not realize these guys would disappear for the remainder of my visit. I was disappointed, but saw and photographed other amazing birds at this location. It was a sunny morning and probably one of the first days this spring in which I was truly able to ditch my winter coat for something lighter. The sun made the brown and green grasses of the surrounding fields glow with warmth. My uncle, a lifelong birder, lives in the area and so we had arranged to meet. He was already there scoping out the place and met me at my car where we found our first good bird and my first lifer at the location. A savannah sparrow was right there in the field next to the parking lot. I took maybe two steps from my car to get a series of photos. And so um, one thing I do during these virtual field trips is someone gets a lifer the first time they've ever seen a bird in their life, um, I, I give an award. And so I present this award to myself, <laughs> a lifer award. All right. And so there on the right is the Savannah Sparrow at Forey Meadows that was right by the parking lot. And then I took two more photos um, of this bird to share with you all, Savannah Sparrow at Forey Meadows. All right, what a way to start the morning. The fields were also full of red-winged blackbirds. The males, of course, stood out with their glossy black plumage and bright red and yellow epaulets, uh, but females were also present in their more sparrow-like plumage. There were also many eastern bluebird and tree swallow competing for nesting boxes along the trail. The swallows seemed to be just a bit braver than the bluebirds around people walking the trails. One tree swallow it didn't budge as I walked right by him. Their boxes are right along the trail, so both species must be used to humans. Uh, these birds perching atop a box or nearby shrub made for a lovely view, and I snapped quite a few photos. We also heard but did not see Virginia rail, that's my second lifer, um, and Sora along the trail. I was happy that the second target species, the Wilson snipe, made an appearance. I saw a handful of them flying from one area of the marsh to another, only to disappear back into the reeds when landing. No clear photos of these birds for me, but this was my third lifer at Foreign Meadows. So on the left-hand side there, a picture of a red-winged blackbird at Foreign Meadows. 
And here's two more pictures of red winged blackbird, a male on the left and female on the right. Whoa. And you can see, you know, they look different. The, the males have, you know, the, 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 the glossy black and the, the red and yellow shoulder patch. And then the females look very sparrow-like. And if you're not, you know, familiar with a female red winged blackbird, you might actually think it's just a big sparrow. I probably made that mistake when I was a beginning birder. Um, but you know, once you kind of learn what it looks like, um, you, you, they, they have this white eyebrow. Um, you can't really see it here, but they do have a little bit of an epaulette, just like their um, their male counterparts. It's usually more of an orange, but you can kind of see that too. Oops. All right, female <clears throat> red winged blackbird again on the left and. Excuse me, I'm gonna take us to the water. <clears throat> Losing my voice today. Excuse me, everyone. All right, yeah, female red winged blackbird on the left and eastern bluebird on the right at Forry Meadows. And then two more pictures of that bluebird. Uh, the one on the left is on top of the, the post that the, the nesting box is on, and then it had hopped down to the top of the box for another for another photo. And here's uh, a couple of, or it's the same tree swallow at Furry Meadows on a nesting box. And here's the individual that let me just get really close. I was able to walk right by it on the trail um, and it did not care. It just sat there and, and looked around. Right, we also came across a strange looking mallard hanging out with two typical colored male mallards in a pond and later with the help of what's this bird Facebook group identified him as a domestic manky mallard. I was I have included the photo in this presentation, but it isn't a clear shot as the bird was far away and behind tall grasses. However, you can still make out his very plumage while maintaining the bright yellow bill and orange legs of a typical mallard. So you can kind of see his legs sticking up here, the bright orange that mallards usually have, and of course that characteristic yellow bill. The term manky describes the varied and often motley coloration of certain feral and domestic mallards. All right, my uncle and I came to the point in the trail that leads through the woods. Here we saw red belly, downy and pileated woodpecker, black cap, chickadee, tufted titmouse, white breast and nuthatch, and herd a Carolina wren. Glances at these birds were fleeting and enjoyed through binoculars only. However, as we neared the end of the woodland trail, we saw a northern flicker on a tree and I was able to snap a photo. We exited the woodland trail early to walk back through a field as I was eager to see more grassland birds. I was a little disappointed to not have been able to photograph more woodland birds. And then a black capped chickadee popped up in the middle of the field, um, which is a, a woodland bird. I was able to snap a few photos before it disappeared. We also came across a beautiful field sparrow and American goldfinch. A red-tailed hawk also enjoyed circling around the utility towers and even perched on one for a time. So here's my photo of the Northern Flicker at um, Furry Meadows in the woods. And then I wanted to include a picture of on, on the left there is the field trail. So we exited uh, the woodland trail a little early. It, it, it continued on to loop around, um, but I wanted to get back to the field uh, birds. And so we we cut through that, that mode. Um, it looks like it's a a, a driveway almost there you can see there's tracks there and, and walked right between those towers and I do not have a picture of the red-tailed hawk it was flying very high and when it landed it was also it perched was at the very top of those towers and it just did not make for a good photo but it was there flying around and it was kind of cool to, to watch through binoculars and on the right hand side um, is a field sparrow with its characteristic pink bill and then here are um, the, the pictures of the black capped chickadee that, that popped up in the middle of the field. Really cool to see that bird out there. And then the American goldfinch that was also in that stretch of field under the utility, utility towers. 
All right, my uncle and I were delighted to come across a brown thrasher who is back for the summer. Uh, we heard him before we saw him. In fact, the Cornell Lab describes brown thrashers as exuberant singers with one of the largest repertoires of any North American songbird. This species, like mockingbirds, are mimics and can collect more than 1,100 song types in their lives. Uh, we also saw another savanna sparrow on the return loop. We located it perched in a short tree and then it flew down to cling to some tall grasses. So there on the left hand side is the brown thrasher um, singing away at Foreign Meadows. And then here is the savanna sparrow um, in, in the short tree at Foreign Meadows. And then it flew down to perch on some grasses. All right, I made my second visit to Foray Meadows on April 30th and arrived a little after 9 a.m. I had meant to arrive earlier, but ended up working late the previous night and so slept in a little bit. However, I didn't want to sleep in too late as there were birds to see. I once again saw a couple of killdeer as I pulled into the long driveway to the parking area. I had learned my lesson from the previous visit and wasted no time. I quickly parked, geared up, and raced back to the driveway on foot. One of the killdeer had stuck around and I was finally able to take some photos. The field was full of the same birds as last time, red-winged blackbird, eastern bluebird, tree swallow, and American goldfinch. In fact, I was extremely lucky to see a pair of tree swallows perched on a lovely budding branch. So here on the right-hand side, uh, one of the pictures of a killdeer that I took at Foray Meadows. Two more pictures of that killdeer. I followed it around for quite some time. And these are all cropped. I, I kept my distance. It still kind of looked at me, but it was also looking around at other things. So I don't think I was bothering it. It's always good to keep that in mind when you're birding or, or photographing um, animals to, to make sure that you're not disturbing them or, or inhibiting their behavior and their activity. Another um, shot of the killdeer at Foray Meadows. And here, uh, two different American goldfinch at, at two different places along the trail at Furry Meadows. And then here's a tree swallows at Furry Meadows. And this is the what I was talking about, two perched together on the same um, budding tree branch. Um, they look so cute just sitting there together. And as you can see, the one on the right-hand side um, this one right here is about to take off and then on the next page just you know the, the the one left and we just had one left at the very top and I took a couple more pictures. Female red winged blackbird on the left and male red winged blackbird on the right at Rory Meadows. And there's two more pictures of the male red winged blackbird. And what he's doing right now is called song spread. So when they make their, their okari call and they, they kind of puff up and, and push out their wings, um, they, they're, they're claiming, ter they're establishing this as their territory and they're, um, they're making that call and they're, they're puffing up and that, that's called song spread. All right. Uh, the place was practically overrun with red-winged blackbirds, but a particular individual caught my eye. He was definitely a red-winged blackbird as he had the right size, shape, and behaviors, but his coloration was a little peculiar. He had the glossy black plumage that one would expect of a male of his species, but that glossy black was speckled with white and his, his epaulets was right, I'm sorry, his epaulet was bright orange instead of the typical red and yellow. Was this a juvenile or a pigment issue? I resolved to find the answer. I turned to the Cornell Labs Birds of the World online resource, the subscription is worth every penny, and found that this individual could have been experiencing either a formative or first alternate molt. However, I wanted confirmation and a couple additional curiosities that cropped up while reading the entry. Mainly, did this guy have a chance in formative or first alternate molt of attracting a mate? He was certainly trying his best by displaying song spread with his flamboyant oka recall. I also read that formative molt in a male can look very similar to a female's sparrow-like plumage. I wanted to know if there are any good guidelines for distinguishing a female from a male in formative molt. 
So here on the left is a picture of that male runway blackbird um, that I just described at Furry Meadows. And you can see he has, you know, the black plumage, but he's got speckles of white right here and orange shoulder patch instead of the typical red and yellow. So I saw that the Birds of the World entry had a section about the authors, and so I decided to track them down. Worst case scenario, I would never hear back. I really had nothing to lose but a few minutes of my time. Luckily, Dr. Ken Yasukawa, um, emeritus professor of biology at Beloit College, responded to my email and answered my questions in great detail. I was so pumped. Here is his reply. He says, yes, I think it's a male informative or first alternate plumage. Without molt information from your area, my best guess is first alternate plumage. This male will probably get blacker through the spring as the buffy fringe wears off. The orange epaulette um, with black spots is characteristic of yearling males. He continues, yearling males can hold territories briefly during the breeding season, and they perform all of the territory defense behaviors of older males, but they are unlikely to do so long enough to attract females and probably have only very limited reproductive success, if any. Most young are sired by the territory owner and the nearby territorial males in definitive alternate plumage. That's the, the black with the red and yellow shoulder patch, the, um, the characteristic male red winged blackbird plumage. Um, oh, so it says, yeah, most young are sired by the territory owner and the nearby territorial males in definitive alternate plumage, but some authors claim that the sires of young are not always territory holders, that is, territory holders do not account for 100% of sampled young, and speculate that yearly non-territorial males may therefore gain some reproductive success. So this guy might have a chance. <laughs> um, yes, formative males are typically darker than females. Males in formative and first alternate plumage are tremendously variable. Some are very female-like, whereas others are pretty much all black like older males. I always look at the epaulets to identify males. Epaulets of yearly males look like the one in your photo, orange with black spots and a white fringe, rather than red with a yellow fringe, except for some populations in California and Mexico, and no black spots. Only old females in good condition have conspicuous orange epaulets, and even with these epaulets, you would not confuse them with yearly males. If you see live birds, their vocal behavior is always a giveaway. So I was just ecstatic that, um, that the professor emailed me back and gave that great amount of detail. Very interesting to learn so much about this unusual um, bird. And here's my bird list. So um, 39 species total. I always uh, highlight in red the notable species. Now these are what are notable to me. If you were looking at this list, you might pick out different birds and that's fine. For me, um, the Virginia rail, Sora, Kildare, Wilson snipe, as I saw a solitary sandpiper, the brown thrasher and the Savannah sparrow were all notable. And then my uh, lifers are are also adorned with a little award there. All right. So next up is Sean Missig. Sean visited the park three times and um, has a total of twenty five species. Am I still sharing my screen? For some reason, I lost the chat. Can you all hear me and see the screen? All right. I can. Okay, excellent. Thank you. All right. On last month's call, it was revealed, and this is what Sean says, this is Sean's journaling. So on last month's call, it was revealed that the virtual field trip program would be ending with our trip to Foreign Meadows. While this news saddened me, I'm thankful that this program existed in the first place and Foreign Meadows was the perfect location to bring this program to a close. My first visit was on April 3rd, the night before and the morning of April 3rd, we received some snow and this only added to my experiences there. When I first drove up the long driveway to the parking area, I noticed a house that was set in the forest and surrounded by the trees. 
with the way the snow sat on the trees, I knew I needed to get a shot of this. I was able to get my shots in before the snow fell off the trees and I was happy with my results. After this, I started to walk the path to the left of the shelter. Robins, song sparrows, and killdeer were scattered throughout the area and I heard a call from some Wilson snipe. These snipe were very well hidden and I did not find any of them. I continued up the path towards the woods and saw many geese flying around the area, especially by the small pond. Turkey vulture were also overhead and soaring throughout the area. And on the right hand side there, uh, a picture of um, what Sean described the house in the snow at Ferrari Meadows. Um, and I love it, Sean, that you seem to capture, I think that might be a turkey vulture right there, um, right, right in the middle of your photo. I thought that was really cool. All right, so and here's a, another picture of that turkey vulture on the left and then uh, the tree with the house and the snow on the right at Furry Meadows by Sean Missig. Another a couple more winter scenes here, a bench in the snow on the left and a tree again on the right at Furry Meadows by Sean Missig. It's so fun to see the difference. I only went later in the month and to see, you know, April really is, you know, a month of change where it's so cold and snowy at the beginning and by the end, it's practically summer. All right, Song Sparrow on the left and American Robin on the right at Furry Meadows by Sean Missig. As I started to make my way into the woods, the snow began melting and falling off of the trees. To make matters worse, the wind picked up a little too, which really helped the snow to come down. Big wet globs of snow pummeled me from above on the entire walk through the woods, which was a lot longer than I thought it would be. I also couldn't find anything in the woods the entire time I walked through. I guess the birds were smarter than me at this point and avoided the falling snow. When I finally made it out of the woods, I noticed a smaller bird flying through the air and decided to take a picture of it since it looked a little different as it was flying. I'm glad I took the shot. It was a Wilson snipe. Continuing the path toward the main parking area, I saw more of the resident species and decided to end my day there. And there's a picture on the left hand side of the Wilson snipe flying at Forey Meadows. On the left hand side, a geese in flight, and on the right there, an eastern bluebird at Furry Meadows by Sean Missig. White breasted nuthatch on the left, and eastern Phoebe on the right at Furry Meadows by Sean Missig. All right, April 17th, we got another batch of snow, not as much as April 3rd, but enough that you knew it had snowed. At this point, I blame myself for this, as it seemed we only got snow when I was planning on making the trip to Ferrari Meadows. As much as I love winter and the snow, I was ready for spring. I put the winter gear back on and headed out for my second adventure here. And with it being later in the month, more of the migratory species were making their way back and this made for a very diverse visit. I took the same path as my first visit. As I made my way towards the woods, I noticed a pair of red-tailed hawks as they were being harassed by some crows. One of them flew from the tree line to the electrical towers and perched there for some time. The second hawk stayed put and was now getting harassed by blue jays. The second hawk eventually flew off and the first hawk followed behind. During the time I was keeping an eye on these hawks, there was a rather noisy bird nearby. I couldn't identify the calls and I wasn't able to find it at the time either. I used the Merlin app to identify the call and it was a brown thrasher. I had to find this bird. Shortly after the hawks left my, my shortly after the hawks left, my perseverance paid off and I was able to locate the brown thrasher. So on the right hand side, red tailed hawk at Forey Meadows by Sean Missig. And then two more pictures of that red-tailed hawk at Forey Meadows. Another picture of that hawk on the left and the brown thrasher on the right at Forey Meadows by Sean Missig. 
I continued on the path through the woods and thankfully did not get snowed on. There were also many more birds here this time, and that made for a wonderful walk. Most notable was a hermit thrush that made an appearance and didn't mind its picture being taken. After leaving the woods, I made my way back to the small pond and noticed some blue-winged teal swimming around in the water. Little did I know that when I took pictures of them, there was a Wilson snipe on the shore that was not in focus. If I would have seen this while taking the pictures, I would have gotten a snipe picture that wasn't in flight. Better luck next time. So the hermit thrush on the left at Furry Meadows. And then here on the left, the blue winged teal, and you can see, I can see it that uh, Wilson snipe right there in the foreground, just a slightly out of focus. Um, and then the Eastern Bluebird on the right at Foreign Meadows. Song Sparrow on the left and American Goldfinch on the right at Foreign Meadows by Sean Missig. Another Song Sparrow on the left and Kill Deer on the right at Foreign Meadows by Sean Missig. And as soon as I, I saw this picture of the killdeer, it to me the way that it's it's turning back and 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 preening, um, it kind of looks like a grasshopper to me. But that might just be me. I know it's not. I know it's a killdeer. All right, April 30th was my final trip and it went out with a bang. This would be my first visit without snow. So this was already better than the two previous visits. I started out at the furthest parking area and as I was getting my gear ready, I heard a call that I didn't recognize. I used Merlin once again, also cross-reference on YouTube and it said the call was from a Savannah Sparrow. I knew what I was looking for now, but I wasn't able to find it. As I continued towards the small pond, there were many more calls from Wilson Snipes. So I was hopeful that I would get a shot of one. Throughout my walk, I saw many of the same species that I saw on the previous trips. However, now the tree swallows were in the area and they were attempting to claim the bird boxes. Bluebirds were also quite numerous and they wanted the bird boxes as well. No fighting occurred, but you could tell there was some tension between these two species. Uh, House Sparrow uh, sitting on a box on the right-hand side at Furry Meadows. Then on the left, we have a female red-winged blackbird and on the right, an Eastern bluebird, female at Furry Meadows by Sean Missig. Eastern bluebird, that time a male on the left and red-tailed hawk on the right at Furry Meadows by Sean Missig. Killdeer on the left and Eastern bluebird on the right at Furry Meadows by Sean Missig. That's like another female bluebird. And tree swallows. All right, I also saw a crow land in a tree close to the parking lot. It seemed to be looking at an area on the ground and didn't stay long in that tree. It made its way down to the area it was looking at and started walking around. I snapped a few shots and it took off. Upon takeoff, a red-winged blackbird started chasing it and was on the attack. I, it tried to dive bomb the crow on several occasions and chased it into another tree nearby. After a moment of rest, the red-winged blackbird continued to harass the crow until it finally flew back into the woods. I spent the rest of my visit attempting to get shots of swallows in flight and any of the snipe that I was hearing. I got one shot of a snipe, but it was during flight again and further away. Maybe one day I'll get this elusive bird. Even though I didn't get my shot, it was a very peaceful ending to my visit and the perfect way to close the virtual field trip chapter for me. So on the left there, American Crow at Furry Meadows by Sean Missig. And here, the red-winged blackbird mobbing an American crow at Furry Meadows by Sean Missig. Really cool shots to see. And then here's two more pictures of that event. I would like to extend a huge thank you to Western Chicago Audubon Society and also Michelle Brocious for making the virtual field trip program possible. I can honestly say that without this program, I would not be the photographer and birder that I am today. The virtual field trips have taught me a lot about my surrounding area and the species that call it home or migrate to and from it. 
I have also met many wonderful people along the way because of the virtual field trips. And that is something I wouldn't trade for anything. Thank you all for tagging along and being a part of this journey. I look forward to future programs with the Audubon Society and seeing all of you on the trails. Well, thank you for that, Sean. Um, and pitch, beautiful picture of Kildare um, on that the manicured lawn with all those daffodils or dandelions, I mean, at Furry Meadows by Sean Missig. Picture of a killdeer in flight on the left and then a nice shot of the picnic shelter on the right at Furry Meadows by Sean Missig. And here's Sean's bird list. Uh, notables that I felt were notable, killdeer, Wilson Snipe, Hermit Thrush, Brown Thrasher, Savannah Sparrow, and Blue Winged Teal. Um, and the picture on the left is some mallards at Furry Meadows by Sean Missig. And with that, um, thank you, a huge thank you to Sean for um, going out to the location three times and, and participating in the virtual field trip. And a huge thank you to Geauga Park District for uh, managing the Foreign Meadows property. Um, I put the address to Foreign Meadows there. I plugged it in my GPS, no problems getting there. It's, it's pretty easy to find. Um, I encourage all of you and invite you to check out our WCAS virtual field trips playlist on YouTube. All of these virtual field trips have been recorded just like the one this evening and I, I put them on our YouTube channel in the virtual field trips playlist. So if you want to check out previous virtual field trips, they've all been at a different location um, in the Northeast Ohio area. Um, feel free to do so. Please also visit wcaudubon.org for more events. We are in the process of getting a calendar up. Um, and in the meantime, you can email us at info at wcautobot.org and let us know if you wish to subscribe to our weekly emails, which are full of events and information. And on the left-hand side there, I included a, a picture of Savannah Sparrow at Furry Meadows. So with that, I would like to open up um, for discussion. So uh, Sean or Susie, if either of you wants to make any comments or ask any questions, please feel free to do so. Looks like we lost the other one. Yep, as soon as I said her name. <laughs> <laughs> Some people don't like the talk. It was just an invitation. They, she didn't have to. Right? Yeah, or maybe she had to go. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Um, I, I just reiterate that this, this program was wonderful. So, you know, th this was good. Thank you to you and, and to the Audubon Society for this. Of course, it was it was my pleasure to do it and a really, a really fun activity, um, especially, you know, during the pandemic gave us all something to do and everything was shut down you know absolutely yeah and yeah. I, i've learned so many new locations with this that it's crazy and and if gas wasn't as high as it is i i'd be traveling a lot more but oh yeah yeah for sure this is a tough time now for traveling um a, a, a tip how i found a lot of these locations if um I know that you don't eBird, but um, mm -hmm. if you do create an account, you can, I don't know if you have to create an account to do this. You might want to try without creating an account, but you can explore, You get, there's an explore button at the top of eBird okay. and you can put in um, a county. So it, it goes by county. So Cuyahoga, Geauga, wherever it is you want. And once you go, once you go in there, it lists the top birding locations in the county. So that's basically how I found a lot of these places was going to those lists where people were going to bird. <laughs> okay. Uh, you know, yeah. So that's like if you okay. if you were ever like, oh, I want to check out someplace new, you know, what is there around here? Just you know, go to eBird, explore, put the county in and see the list that comes up. And it, they're usually very long lists, a lot of options. So Okay, yeah. that's good to know. I will, yeah, yeah I'll definitely check that out because with, with my, I, I'm limiting my travel purposely. And so I, mm -hmm. I don't want to end up going to these same locations. Um, I actually just tried a bridal trail the other weekend and that was such a jackpot for warblers. It, oh yeah, where, where, where was it at? Um, 
it's uh, over here at, uh, I don't know which park system that would be considered, but it's the covered bridge um, okay. by Whitney Road. Okay. And I think it's technically Strongsville. Okay. Um, property line, but yeah, the, the main covered bridge that comes, or no, no. Yeah, I, I think it is Whitney. Um, but it, it's kind of right around the corner from the um, Metro Parks Ranger Station over here as well. Okay, and very cool. Yeah, the bridal trail just runs right along the river. I actually stopped and took some infrared shots of the covered bridge and plenty of swallow around there. And then, like I said, the warblers were just, there was tons of them. Excellent. That's, that's amazing. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I live up in Rocky River and I just, just yesterday, um, I went to Wendy Park because that's also, a, and that's not a place I, I ever made a virtual field trip location. And mm -hmm. um, if we had done one this month, that's probably the location I would pick because it is amazing in May. Lots of warblers come in there. Um, but you, you know, that's a bit far for you. <laughs> You're trying well, to, but one, found, so I'm glad you found a place to see them. Yeah. So that one, yeah. I, I don't mind Wendy Park. Uh, I also went the other week to uh, Lakefront Nature Preserve. I don't mind um, that. I'm, I'm forcing myself. You'll travel myself. for that. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I, I forced myself to avoid going way out to the east side. I haven't been to oh. Chagrin River Park and uh, Mentor Headlands yeah. Beach in probably two maybe three months now and that wow. is that is not good for me because normally I'm there at least once a month because I love those places and mm -hmm. I can't get there so those are really good locations I'm sorry that mm -hmm. like you know Forey Meadows was kind of out that way too not quite as far as Headlands um but it's right. still east side Jaga County so thank you for making three trips <laughs> yeah no I, throughout April <laughs> I, I told myself I was going to I said no this is great and when I started looking into the location I said okay and yeah. then after the first time I went there and the way everything looked I says no I I have to make it out here as much as I can because this is just beautiful and mm -hmm. I actually took the I don't know if it was my last trip or if it was the trip before that but I actually went out to no, it was definitely the last trip because I wasn't wearing any of my winter gear. Um, I went into downtown Chagrin Falls and actually got a picture of the waterfalls that's okay. there. And Excellent. that's something I kept seeing people posting stuff about it in the different groups I'm in. And I had never been there. And I said, wait, that's five minutes down the road. I'm going. So it actually worked out real good. Excellent. Well, welcome back, Edith. Did you have trouble getting back in? We have, um, I was just connecting to audio. Okay. Yeah, we've, we've finished the program, but it is recorded and it will be on our YouTube channel, Western Chicago Audubon YouTube channel. So um, if you were interested in seeing the rest of it, um, it'll be there for you. I give me a few days to put it up, um, but it should be there. All right. All right, any other um, comments or questions about um, anything in the presentation today? All right. Well, Edith, you joined us for the very end. Thank you for, uh, for coming back in. I'm sorry that um, if you were having trouble connecting, um, like I said, I'll, I'll put it on YouTube. Um, and it should be there. And we have all of our previous virtual field trips, 22 months now, um, one, once a month, so 22 recordings um, to check out as well if you happen to like what you see. All right, so with that, um, thank you for joining me this evening. And um, I hope you have a great evening and um, get out there and see some birds. Migration is, is happening and it's spectacular. All right, good night, everybody.